Good day to all of you. Welcome to EC Physics. Learn physics as easy as 1 to 3. Through this video, we are going to discuss about fluid friction. Through our previous videos, we have already discussed about the different types of friction, namely static friction, sliding friction, rolling friction, and so on. The speciality was all these were the opposite force existing between solid parts of object. But do you think that friction exists only between solid parts? Obviously not. It can be existing when an aircraft is flying in air. The aircraft will also experience an opposite force. Here it is offered by air. Or when a ship is sailing in sea, that also will experience an opposite force which is offered by the water. So it is not only the solid state objects will be you know, uh, applying the opposite force, but liquids and gases will also be applying opposition against the motion, which is friction. When gases or liquids apply friction against motion, we call it as fluid friction. Then what is a fluid? Liquids and gases together can be addressed as fluids. What is so special about fluids? Fluids is having a speciality that it has no fixed shape and we can easily change their shape. They will yield easily to external pressure. So those states of matter that is liquids and gaseous state together can be called as fluid. That is why the pressure exerted by gases and liquids can be combinedly called as fluid friction. Does air offer resistance? Obviously, yes. When you drop a stone or any object in air, air will be opposing the motion of the object, but air resistance comparing to the weight of the object most of the time will be very negligible. But when you drop a very, very light object like a feather, it will take so much time to come to ground. All the objects are coming to ground due to gravitational force, right? Since the weight of the feather is very small, air resistance plays an important role. But it doesn't mean that only feather or lighter objects will be experiencing air resistance. Every object will experience air resistance. What is air resistance? It is basically the friction between an object and the air. That is when objects moves in air, it experiences an opposite force, which will be definitely acting against the direction of motion of the object. And what is the reason for this air resistance? As we all know that every material is made up of atoms or molecules, right? Definitely air is also made up of atoms or molecule. When something moves through the air, it bumps into the atoms and molecules and which creates an opposition against the motion. So that is a reason for air resistance. Friction offered by liquids. When an object is moving in a liquid, for example, when somebody is swimming in water or a fish swims in water, the object will experience an opposition which is against the motion. And definitely this opposition depends on the thickness of the liquid in which they move. Basically or normally, thicker fluids will exert more resistance against the flow. For example, if you take water and say uh, honey, honey is thicker as compared to water, right? When same object having same mass is allowed to move through water and honey, the object which is moving through water will reach the destination quicker as compared to the object which is moving through honey because honey is thicker and it will exert more resistance to the movement of the object. There is a new term called viscous drag. What is viscous drag? It is a kind of frictional force exerted by fluids. We call the thickness of uh, you know, liquids in general as viscosity. Viscous drag is the kind of frictional force which is exerted by fluids which opposes the motion of an object through that particular fluid. Now let's see 
what are the factors on which the fluid friction depends? There are three major factors on which fluid friction depends. One is nature of the fluid. Second one is speed of the object. And third one, shape of the object. Let us go quickly into each of these factors. How does it vary from one object to other object? Nature of the liquid. That is, if you take two liquids or two fluids, the one which is thicker will exert greater frictional force. When you compare two uh, you know, very common fluids, air and water, air is very thin as compared to water, right? Water is having more thickness or we can say more viscous is water. When objects are moving, the objects moves in air reaches quickly as compared to the object moves in water, right? So more the thickness of the fluid, greater will be the frictional force acting on it. So this is one factor on which fluid friction depends. The second one is the speed of the object. Higher the speed of the object, greater will be the frictional force. That you might be experiencing, like you know, when you normally walk, you don't feel the pressure of air, right? But when you run very fast in the same atmosphere, in the same level, you will feel the you know, force exerted by air against you, right? So as the speed increases, you will be facing more friction offered by any fluid. So that is a second factor on which fluid friction depends. The first one is it depends on the nature of the fluid. Second one, it depends on the speed of the object which is moving in that fluid. And thirdly, it depends on the shape of the object. Normally, objects with streamlined shape face less fluid friction. What is streamlined face shape? You might have observed that all the fast moving objects are having a very common shape. As you can see here, bullet or a racing car or a bullet train, aeroplane, fish, all these are having a very common shape that it is having narrow edges, right? This common shape is called a streamlined structure. You will never see like a rectangular box as an aeroplane, right? All the aeroplanes are having a very common structure. It is looking like a fish, right? Uh, that sh fish shape is called the streamlined structure. Streamlined bodies will experience less fluid friction. That is why all the fast moving objects are having this streamlined shape. Hope all the three factors are very clear to all of you that fr fluid friction depends on nature of the fluid, speed of the object, and shape of the object. To conclude the fluid friction topic, let us have a quick recap of what all things we discussed today. What is fluid friction? It is nothing but the friction offered by fluids. We otherwise call it as viscous drag. That is, it is obviously the frictional force or the opposite force offered by any kind of fluid. Fluid means it could be gaseous state or liquid state. The factors affecting friction are nature of the fluid, speed of the object, and shape of the object. Hope all of you have understood the concept of fluid friction very, very clearly. Hope you all enjoyed learning about fluid friction. Thank you for watching. If in case of any doubts, please do comment your doubts in the comment section so that I'll be very happy to address your doubts. Thank you once again for watching. Have a great day ahead to all of you.